Do you know how to evaluate and compare pet foods? Well, I'm going to show you how to do the most comprehensive analysis of any pet food in under a minute. I'm Glenn Massey from Homeschooling for Dogs, and my goal is to help you lead, care, and connect with your dogs to achieve control and cooperation, not submission. If this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I post a new video. If you're like me, you find it challenging to try and compare pet foods, whether you're looking at dry foods, canned foods, dehydrated foods, frozen raw, fresh prepared foods. I found it challenging and more so time consuming to try and evaluate and compare pet foods. So I created the Pet Food Math Cheat Sheet. I'm going to show you how to use that now. The Pet Food Math Cheat Sheet I created in Microsoft Excel, but it also works in Google Sheets. You can use Microsoft Excel legally for free, and I'll put a link in the description below. When you open the Pet Food Math Cheat Sheet, the first eight tabs are going to be used for typical dry kibble. Pet foods are considered lower quality and lower digestibility, so there's not as many calories for the protein, the fat, and the carbs in the food. If you're using a high quality pet food using human grade ingredients, at the end of the Pet Food Mat Cheat Sheet, tabs nine and 10 are calculated at higher calories. They're calculated at human calories, four for protein, nine for fat, and four for carbohydrates. But unless you know the food been formulated or calculated that, use the first eight tabs. With the Pet Food Mat Cheat Sheet, you'll know how many grams of protein that food's providing, but you'll also know what the balance is between protein, fat, and carbs. Let's start with one of these vet-recommended popular brands, Hill Science Diet. We're gonna start with this uh, chicken and barley recipe. So this is the Pet Food Mac Cheat Sheet. I'll explain this more as we go through. You fill in all the light green areas as needed. Over here, it shows calories per day and cost. What we're gonna put in here is the calories that an average 50 pound dog would eat in a day, which is 925 calories. You don't have to do that, but it really gives you more detailed information on the food we're feeding. I put in the price and we're gonna use a 15 pound bag and you're gonna see why in a minute. So let's find a guaranteed analysis on this food. So we're gonna take this guaranteed analysis. You can take it off the bag. I'm just taking it off the website and we're just gonna pop the numbers into here. 20.5, 12 fat, three maximum fiber, 10 maximum moisture, Dry foods typically run, on average, run between 4 and 8% ash content. We have that listed down here. So we're going to use 6 as an average to start. So now understand the guarantee analysis is not the exact representation within the food, but it gives you the minimums of protein and fat that you can find in the food, and it tells you the maximum fiber and moisture. And a dry food, these are a pretty close benchmark. How close it is, is determined by this number down here, where it says 0% right now. We don't know how close this is to the actual food until we put in the calories. On the retailer's website, they just show 364 calories. But let's go over to the manufacturer's website and get the calories, which is 3665 calories per kilogram. Kilograms 2.2 pounds. So we're gonna fill that in here, 3665. Once we fill that in, you see the whole form populates. Down here just below this, it'll show us what the dry matter overall is for the food. It'll show us the grams per cup, the ounces per cup, cups per pound, cost per cup, cost per pound, and how many cups in a package. All that's well and good, but what I really wanna know is, what's it gonna cost me to feed a day, which is $1.11, and how many servings or how many days will this bag of food last me? It's gonna last 27 days based on 925 calories a day. That's important because when we open that bag of dog food, it starts degrading very quickly. So ideally, if we can use up a bag under 30 days, closer to 14, even better. But no more than 30 days do we want a bag of dog food. Because as soon as we open that bag, we expose it to air and humidity. The fats in that food are going to be the first thing that starts to degrade. This number here, this 252, is the grams per day. If you feed 252 grams, it will equal 925 calories. You can just easily measure that on a scale. So our 50 pound dog eating this food at 925 calories a day is going to be getting 51.7 grams of protein as a minimum, because remember the protein content in the food is a minimum. With this number down here, this 94%, that tells us based on the guaranteed analysis, we can account for 94% of the calories of this 3665, which is pretty good for a dry food. As long as it's 90% and above, we know we're pretty close what's actually in the food. In all reality, there's probably just a little bit more protein and just a little bit more fat in this food. So if we look over here, the important things, 
cost per thousand calories. If you want to compare foods across the board, look at the cost per thousand calories. This is $1.20 for a thousand calories. It's providing almost 56 grams as a minimum amount of protein for every thousand calories. The breakdown of this food is 21% protein, 30% fat, 49% carb. For the math nerds, these numbers here are how many grams per protein, fat, fiber, moisture, carbs in a thousand calories. And this is how many calories there are in a thousand calories. So how many protein calories are there in a thousand calories? In this food, there's 196 protein calories, 278 fat calories, and 463 carbohydrate calories for every thousand. You can see this number doesn't completely reach a thousand because the guaranteed analysis is only accounting for 94 percent. Fortunately, the manufacturer, if we look at the website here, they give us average nutrient and calorie content of the food. Now what you have to understand here this average nutrient content on their website is showing us dry matter. So I already put that in. So I took their exact numbers and put them in the cheat sheet. And you can see when we look at what the average is, it brings this number up to 99%. So we can account for essentially all the calories now in this food. Now you can see when we look at the average nutrient content of this food, this food actually provides 61 grams of protein per thousand calories. So let's compare this with another food. Let's look at Raw's meal-free food, which is on my favorites list right now. So a local retailer, it has a price at $48.99 for a 10-pound bag. Again, I'm going to put in our 50-pound dog's average calorie consumption of 925 calories a day. On Raw's, we're going to go over here, look at the guaranteed analysis, and we're going to pop that in here. So we're going to just put the guaranteed analysis. So 40% protein, 12% fat, 4 fiber, maximum 10 moisture. Again, we're going to use our 6 as our average ash, ash content, just to keep it fair across the board. Calories on this food is 37, 10, and 460 calories per cup. So as soon as we put the calories in, you see the form populates again. And we've got 92% here, so we're pretty close to the numbers on that. Anything above 90 is good. When you get below 90, the fat content is almost always going to be much higher in the food. So this food, for every 1,000 calories it's providing, almost 108 grams of protein, which is fantastic. So our 50 pound dog is now going to get almost 100 grams of protein for the 925 calories it's, our dog is eating a day. Again, this food, we're gonna feed 249 grams of that food in order to reach that. And it's gonna cost us $2.69 a day to feed that because quality protein is more expensive and that's reflected in the price. This food, you can see the scale here, it's 41% protein, 30% fat, and 29% carbs. Completely opposite of the Hills diet, which is low protein, moderate fat, and high carbs. The manufacturer also provides a typical analysis, which is what's typically in the food. And you can see when we put this in, the numbers change. Why are these numbers important? Higher protein food is really important for senior dogs. It's also important for dogs that need to lose weight, you want to make sure the food you're feeding has a high quality protein content so you're not underfeeding your dog protein if you're cutting their food back on a weight loss program. Let's say you've got a canned food and you don't know what the calories per kilogram is. Well down here on the cheat sheet you can say that canned food, put in the size of that canned food which is 12.5 ounces. We know the calories so we'll fill that in here. Once we fill that in it will tell us this food equal 1259 calories per kilogram and then you just fill that in back up here in the spot. Let's say you're looking at another food that lists calories per ounce. We use this part on the cheat sheet. This is a dehydrated food. You just put in how many calories per ounce, and it will tell you that this food has 6,490 calories per kilogram in it, because this is a dehydrated food with a really low moisture content. So it's going to have higher calories for the weight, because it doesn't have a lot of water in it. So in Europe, they don't list calories per kilogram. They list calories per 100 grams. So you just take that calories per 100 grams on their food, Let's say it's uh, 375, and it will populate over here. That food will have 3,750 calories per kilogram. So you can just put that information up here in the calories per kilogram, and the cheat sheet will be complete. Protein is a very important number for me because we know from the research, senior dogs actually need more protein. Dogs losing weight need to make sure they have sufficient protein in that diet, especially if we're feeding them less. We don't want to be cutting their protein back. And we know that dogs from the research eating 32% protein, animal-based protein, had a better body composition score than dogs eating a high-protein food that was deriving some of that protein from plants. 
If you want more information on the Pet Food Math Cheat Sheet, there's a link in the description below. There's also information on how you should properly store your dog food and how I choose dog food.